Is it possible to fly an F-15 Eagle just using your Arduino and this gyroscope accelerometer module? Well, in your imagination, yes. Fantastic. To see how this is done, once again we need to refer to the first Eligu example and then we can build on it with some other projects. The module here is a GY521. As it says here, it's a, an IMU or inertia measurement unit. That's a sensor that's used in all sorts of devices from self-balancing robots, unmanned aerial vehicles, smartphones, uh, Fitbits if you use those, and of course drones. What does it do? It contains what's called uh, MEMS sensors. Now MEMS stands for Micro Electromechanical System. These days with the advance of technology we're now on to even smaller devices which are based on nanotechnology, so even a thousand times smaller than what's in this little chip here. There follows a description of how it works. I suggest that you read that through yourselves and try and get your head around it. All that we really need to know at this point in time is that it is essentially just an accelerometer which will give us values of movement in the x, y and z planes combined with a gyroscope. Now the gyroscope is described here. It uses the principle of Coriolis acceleration. Coriolis was a, a French physicist. It's interesting that uh, this effect works at both the, the macro and the micro level. On a macro scale you can see it working on the Earth's surface which is why hurricanes rotate in a certain direction in the northern hemisphere and tsunamis in the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere. Here we are looking at it at the micro level. Again I'll leave you to read through that and try and get your head around it. All we need to know really is that it's going to give us the values of acceleration and movement. For such a complex beast the wiring for it is very simple. The first thing to note is that this is the first device in our sensors which uses the 3.3 volt rail and not the 5 volt rail. If you connect this guy to 5 volts, most likely the magic smoke is going to come out. It uses the I squared C interface using the SDA and SCL connections. On the Arduino, there are two locations for those. So I've elected to connect them for convenience here on the A4 and A5 pins. They could equally well be connected here, SCL and SDA. Your choice. There are other pins on the module, but they're not used in this particular example. If we turn our attention now to the code, it uses the wire library to talk to the device. And all I squared C devices have a unique address. In this instance, it's hex 68. Some modules have a little jumper on that you can move the address on, but this one is fixed at 68. Here we can see it's setting up the integers for the acceleration, temperature, and the gyroscopic movement. Clearly the accelerometer and gyroscope are what the sensor is all about. Why measure the temperature as well? If we move over and take a look at the data sheet, the data sheet shows us that the actual device is capable of operating from minus 40 Celsius up to plus 85 Celsius, which is quite a range. And for the gyroscope, if we look, we can see that there's a scale factor for the variation over temperature of plus or minus 2%. Similarly, for the accelerometer, the same operating range, Again, sensitivity and change versus temperature, plus or minus in this case 0.02% per degree C. Those numbers may not appear to be significant, and in our little Arduino projects as not, not a factor, but if we really were trying to fly an F-15, then I think we would want to take that into consideration. Looking back now at the setup, it initializes the registers needed and wakes the sensor up and in the loop 
it just goes through the different registers and reads out the values. So quite straightforward. If I plug the device in now, if we open our serial monitor, we can see it here outputting the various values. So now if I move the board, you can see the acceleration and the gyros gyroscopic values changing there. And also if we look at the temperature, if I put my finger on the device, the temperature starts to rise. So that's a simple example and shows us the output, but it's not as interesting as uh, flying the F-15 or a couple of other examples I'm going to show you. It was inevitable that servos would enter the frame at some point, as they usually do in my videos. In this instance, we have a servo on the X and a servo on the Y axis of the, of the gyroscope and accelerometer. Now, if we move the board, the corresponding servo is going to move. And equally, in this plane, the other servo. A little bit twitchy, but there again, so am I on occasion. We could perhaps incorporate that with the little gimbal that uh, we showed in the example when we used the joystick to control the gimbal. Perhaps a future project there.